Hello ho! And a grand welcome to the More Thunder YouTube channel. YouTube, you poop, YouTube channel. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to block a knitted garment. The sample that I'm using is this one that I'm wearing right now, and it is made out of superwash merino wool. Depending on what fiber that you're using, there are different ways to block different materials. So if you're using 100% wool, do a little bit of research because um, those are a little more finicky. Also, it's very scary to wash or <laughs> to block 100% wool. I've done it and uh, the sweater like drooped and I just didn't know that that was gonna happen. So I'm like picking it up. It's like twice the length almost. And I'm like, oh my God, I ruined this sweater. So do a little bit of research um, so that you can be abreast of moments like that so that you don't freak out and think that you've ruined your sweater because you haven't. Just make sure temperature is just the most important part. Anyway, so blocking is super duper fun. It's super duper easy. It is an added step to the entire process, but it's so necessary. Imagine waiting four minutes to have your toast being made in the toaster and then just not even putting butter on it. That is the equivalent to taking all the time to knit yourself a sweater and then not taking the 10 minutes to block it and then, you know, like this 10 hours to dry, which you don't even have to like sit there and watch it dry. It can just dry by itself. So blocking is so important. What's going to happen to this sweater is I'm going to lose these ripples. It's going to kind of iron itself out, which is awesome. It's going to make my color work look a lot more beautiful. I mean, I'm a seasoned color work knitter, so I it doesn't really have much to improve on, but still it's going to look nice. Um, it will give me a better shape. I won't have, yeah, essentially I'm just going to not have these puckering parts anymore, which is awesome. So the materials that you're going to need today are a sink or a basin, um, access to warm water, wool wash, which is kind of hard to say. I've shot this video a couple times and saying wool wash always trips me up. Anyway, um, you'll need some pins or you can use knit blockers, which I will show you. These are freaking amazing and they're actually, ooh, they're actually quite inexpensive. Especially if you're using, um, if you're doing shawls, these are awesome. And uh, I actually don't knit shawls yet, but reading the reviews, people are like going crazy about how helpful those are for shawls. And then um, if it suits you, you can use blocking mats. Otherwise you can use a towel. I've actually used a rug before. It's not super efficient on a rug. A towel would honestly be better. Um, but yeah, you'll definitely need a towel to dry it before you pin it down to anything. Um, and then yeah, sometimes it's handy to have a measuring tape on hand. If um, you're trying to go for a specific size, let's say that it's for a gift. Let's say it's for a child. You know, it just ensures that you're getting your garment to the exact size that you want it to be. If this is a personal project, you might not be as particular. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna put in about that much a wool wash just to start you don't really need a lot you want it to be a little sudsy just go little by little um it does not need to turn into a bubble bath So you want to see bubbles honestly i could probably put a little bit more in here but nah okay as you can see my ends are not woven in so go ahead and not weave in your ends you're welcome block it and then weave in your ends because your stitches are going to move um while you're blocking it so if you have already woven in your ends then it might not stay there so there's that So what I'm doing is I'm getting all the bubbles out. Like as you can see, as I squish it, bubbles are forming and that's not necessarily just because of the soap. Oh, it smells good. Honestly, I love the smell of uh, wet sheep. <laughs> so yeah, 
and uh, you're gonna see it's becoming very very stretchy up in here so don't stretch it like I just did don't do that and just try and kind of keep it together go ahead and squish it what you want to do is get all the air out so that every square inch every tiny fiber is wet You don't need to stretch it. You don't need to tug on it. You just need to love on it. Just pat it down. Perfect. Okay, so just for sample purposes, see how far my neck can stretch? Wowza. So if you're using a natural fiber, it's definitely gonna stretch. So just be careful, okay? Now, because this is a leave-in, I can just let it drain. So this says no rinse. Oh, you guys, I'm such a dork. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure as a viewer, you like totally saw that coming. But anyway, so this is eucalyn. I have the grapefruit stuff because I think it smells nice. Good thing it's a leave-in because I just dumped some soap in there. Okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just squeeze it together, squeeze it in on itself and try and get as much water out. Don't be picking it up, don't be doing anything like that because the fibers are just so lazy that they're just gonna limp around and like slink all over themselves. So just keep it on itself. Literally just try to avoid gravity at all costs. <laughs> So basically the amount of water that you get out here is uh, just less water that you have to get out using um, using a towel. So you should be fine like if it's still a little bit wet, you know, if you feel like it's really just stretching and it's freaking you out, just go ahead and go to the towel. Take your time. So pick up your sweater in a ball. Do not let it hang, for the love of God, do not let it hang. And carefully just unwrap it. Hi, cutie. Mm. Okay, so this part of the process, it doesn't have to be pretty. What we're gonna do is we're basically just going to roll it on up, step on it a bunch of times, and then we're gonna pin it to our actual pinning surface. So this is one of two towels that you'll be using if you're pinning it to a towel. Okay, so it doesn't need to look pretty at this point. We're just trying to get moisture out. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to make sure that every part of the sweater is on my surface. Shoop da doo. Ooh, it's heavy. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to start at one end and I'm just going to roll. Just roll, 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 roll your sweater up. Okay. I'm going to take off my Crocs and I'm going to step on it. So we're just trying to step all the moisture off of the thing. And if you're wearing socks, prepare to want to unwear that pair of socks because they're going to get wet. Okay. <laughs> so I feel really good about that. I'm going to unwrap it yay oh, yes, yes, yes. and I can already see that places where I have increases um, the puckering is already starting to mellow out which is just divine I'm sorry that you have to weave in your ends after this that's not exciting but <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I have my mat laid out. So I have my mat laid out and now I'm gently, please do it more gently than what I just did. I don't know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> Careful. Um, I'm gonna gently lay it out. Ugh. Try to not stretch it if you can. Um, unless you're trying to fit a specific size, let's say as you were knitting it, you were like, oh, it's so, it's kind of small, or you tried it on and it's a little tight, sure. Just make sure that you're using a measuring tape so you don't accidentally um, <laughs> to make it too big. So what I did here was I actually put my hand in and I kind of like, stretched just a little so that um, the shoulder was a nice angle rather than like this puckery mess. I'm gonna do that thing again over here with my hand. Just draw that line with my finger. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my fingers and I'm just making some tension along the shoulder so that it all just lands on one spot. So hopefully while you're blocking your garment is just completely flat. If it's not, I don't know what to tell you. I do not know what you did wrong. Um, I'm gonna take the time to take one of my ends and just spit it back into the inside of the sweater. So here are my knit blockers that I got from Knitter's Pride off of Amazon. And what I'm gonna do, take the blocker and I'm going to place it on the very most edge, try and get like a few stitches um, shy and I'm just going to pin it into place. Oh, that was a gross sound. I'm so glad that you're not here to hear that. That was really gross. And I'm going to maybe put a little bit of space in between. Just try and make sure that this line is completely straight. And then I'm going to do that to the perimeter of the rest of the sweater. With the neck, I'm just going to use smaller little T-pins. Okay, so these are T-pins, and they should have come with your blocking mats if you bought blocking mats. Otherwise, they're very cheap to buy online. So what I'm doing is like every five or six stitches, so like every inch or so, I'm putting a T-pin, and I'm just letting it have just a little bit of stretch. Sticking the T-pin in, and then actually just going up a little bit just so that there's just a, like the tiniest amount of tension with the rest of the body of the work. So as you can see, using T-pins is significantly faster, or no, 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 that's not what I meant to say. Using the blockers is significantly faster than doing the T-pins, and it's a lot more consistent because you have um, just a whole two inch section being pinned at the same time, rather than just like these small little points. Plus, if you're very, very detail-oriented, it'll make you feel a lot better knowing that you have a big block of pins in a row rather than um, like one at a time across the entire way. Okay, so, ugh. hopefully you can see me. So now it's all pinned down and I'm probably gonna let it dry like, five, six hours, it really expedites the process if you take a fan and you just sit it, stick it next to it and just put it on high and just leave it. And then like every hour or so, switch it to the other side, switch it to different angles, and then you'll be wearing it by tonight. And by tonight, I mean, right now it's like 11 o'clock. So I have like five or six hours to go before this is fully dry. Okie dokie, so this is what the piece looks like all finished. It's definitely added a more consistent drape. Um, and if you look, it feels like the side profile is a lot less clunky. I know I didn't show you what the side profile looks like before, but it definitely feels um, a lot more streamlined. Also, I think it may have added a little bit of yank, <laughs> yank, <laughs> yoke length, yank. I think it added a little bit of yank to the yoke. Um, 
which for a crop is not super duper ideal, but honestly, I'm not super mad about it. I guess I need to go weave in my ends now. So thank you so much for watching. As always, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials and go and follow me on Instagram. I am on there all the time. Bye.